Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we give Jesus a big hand in the house this morning? Yeah. Yeah, let's lift up Jesus in this place. Let's magnify his name. Come on, we can lift it up high for Jesus. Come on, give Jesus more praise in here. Give Jesus more and more, more, more. We lift you up, O oh Lord. We magnify your name. We glorify you, Jesus. Be lifted up in Port Elizabeth. Be lifted up in this nation. Be lifted up in this place. How many of you say amen to that? Give Jesus one more mighty, mighty hand of praise this morning. Yeah, praise the Lord. Turn to the person beside you and say, how wonderful to be in church with you today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much, Pastor Jimmy and uh, Pastor Mariana. I said her name correctly, Mariana. ¿Sabes por qué yo te dijo eso? Porque yo soy español. ¿Cuántas personas hablan en español? Levanta la mano. Anybody speak Spanish in here? You do now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Say after me, Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Say, avivamiento. avivamiento. Tan fuerte. That means revival so strong. Or, or in South African, leke, 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 revival. And afterwards, braai. <laughs> Followed by giant, wait, I'm not finished, wait, wait, followed by giant boulevards. Oh, hallelujah. It's an honor to be in this great church with uh, your beloved pastor and his beloved wife. Uh, when uh, my dear friend, uh, Dr. Shenley, give Dr. Shenley a great hand here too today. Uh, when he made it uh, possible for me to be able to come I was truly honored. How many of you are honored to be here today? How many of you know that you've got, you've got phenomenal pastors? Amen. We, we really need to give a, give a great hand. Give a great hand for them. And uh, amen. Praise the Lord. And when Dr. Shenley told me the, the nature of, of who these wonderful folk are, I made it a priority to be here. Because I believe that Fathers and mothers are so important in the kingdom of God. How many of you know that? And those that have been fathered into the things of God go further. Can I get an amen? amen. And so it was, an, it was a priority for me to be here, to connect. Because when we connect, we make covenant. Everybody say covenant. covenant. And out of covenant comes contribution. There is a reciprocal anointing that builds something way beyond the walls of this church into the community, into where God wants to reach the lost. So I'm excited to be here. Uh, how, uh, are you? I love this nation. I love South Africa. I spent a year here with Reinhard Bonke. Hallelujah. How many of you know Reinhard? Well, praise God, if you don't, I give you just a little shot burst. I learned here in this nation, Africa shall be saved. Africa shall be saved. From Cape Town to Cairo. From Port Elizabeth to London, England. And that's why I'm so honored to be amongst you. I love this nation. I woke up early this morning praying, as you do. And there are, is a special anointing on South Africa, South Africa. How many of you know that? Because at four o'clock in the morning, your birds are starting to sing. And it's not like the nightingale from England. Nice little tunes. It's like a corn crake or a crow. So I knew it was time to get up and pray. I was, what, what's happening? The Lord said, get out of bed and pray. So I started praying in the Holy Ghost. And uh, I believe I do have a word. I believe I am the word. How many of you know we don't get a message? We are the message. 
How many of you know God set in the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers? And God has set into this body apostles that are changing the nations. And God has set you here because he's got more to do in your life and in my life. Can I get an amen? amen. Now, don't go all quiet on me here now, will you? I, I like it when Reinhardt used to preach. He said, well, if you don't like my preaching, I like it anyway. <laughs> but you know, I'm looking for one or two amens. Somebody said, you know, what's a preacher a long way from home? Uh, well, if they called him a big shot, He's not really. He's a little shot a long way from home. And I'm a long way from home. Will you receive me as one of your homeboys? Yeah. Don't stop me on that homeboy stuff. <laughs> Don't worry, I, I'm not going to rap this morning, you know. But when you, you break down that homeboy beat, me start to feel something in this spirit. I have got a word. I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 to start our text verses. And I want to be sharing about what I believe God wants to do across the nations of the earth. He wants to release the river of God. I believe the river of God is the life-changing, history-making spirit of Jesus that needs to flow out of the church into the world. And in 1 Corinthians 2, verses 1 to 5, I'm starting with this, and then we're going to flow. Paul says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, I didn't come with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and fear and in much trembling. That's a great place to be. Can I say, can I get an Amen. How many of you know when you're weak, he's strong? Let the weak say, I'm strong. God only chooses people that he can manifest his glory in. In 1 Corinthians 1, 26, it says, what kind of people has he chosen? How many of you know what kind of people he's chosen? Say after me, weak people that need his power. Amen? And so... Paul is declaring this, and then these two verses are my favorite, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words. Oh, there's so much enticing words in this hour. In pulpits up and down the land, and politicians up and down the enticing words. You know, enticing words can have the spirit of Jezebel behind it. It's the spirit of witchcraft behind it. The spirit of humanism the spirit of superiority or intellectual pride. But when the spirit of the Lord gets on you and me and we speak what he says, then there's a different kind of way to speak. And Paul says, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. But oh, in the power of God. Amen. 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 Proclamation. Demonstration. Confirmation. I'm a good student. I sat under Reinhardt for years and traveled with him. My own spiritual father in the Lord taught me so many principles of what it is to become a man of the Spirit. Amen. And as I've gone around the world, I am starting to see that God wants to release a river. A river of the Spirit. A river of the power of God. A river of the glory of God. A river of the anointing of God. A river of the presence of God. Because when that river starts to flow, people are healed. People are delivered. People are set free. Blind eyes open. Cripples walk. Cities are shaken. It's called an awakening. And we need more than a revival today. See, revival means to bring something back from its original state which means a lot of churches today are dead. They need a checkup from the neck up. There's no, there's no flow. That's not what I sense here. How many of you can say amen to that? Amen. There's a mighty anointing here. So revival means to be revived. Who needs reviving? 
In South Africa, you have birds. They do it for you at four o'clock. They revive you. Amen. But you need something more than that. You need an awakening. Oh, man, even the word makes me feel like I'm Welsh. You read the history books of the great awakenings. And you go back to 1904, the Welsh revival. You see what happened? God got a consecrated vessel in a boy called Evan Roberts who read, who read the history books. He's still looking today for somebody who will become a revival instrument. Come on, lift your hand and say, Father, make me a revival instrument. Make me an Evan Roberts today in South Africa. Make me have the spirit of Reinhard Bonnke. Raise me up, Lord, that I might be an instrument that might stir and start something for God that would go beyond these walls and begin to touch our communities, our prisons, our schools, begin to touch South Africa with a mighty, mighty wave of the Spirit of God. Father, that's the awakening we need. Evan Roberts, as a 17-year-old boy, pestered his pastor. He said, Pastor, let me have a go, man. As Welsh, I do accents, you see. <laughs> I know you're confused at this point, saying, how can he be English? We've already had South African. We've got Welsh and Spanish. It's because I have Armenian Portuguese blood mixed in to an ensalada de mixta. That's Spanish for a mixed salad. And I've got an Argentinian wife who's beautiful and four amazing kids. But if you'd like me to be British, I will. How's that? <laughs> so what we need today is an awakening, a, a revival, if you would. <laughs> and it needs to be fairly decent and fairly British. <laughs> not too much emotion, not a lot of sort of jumping around. You see, when we do things, the British, it's all sort of very cerebral, sort of paralysis through analysis, you see? <laughs> you see, if we talk about Jesus, we do it our way. You see, I like to think of Jesus as a decent sort of chap. You know the sort of bloke that I mean, he's a sort of handy sort of bloke to have around. I picture him as somebody completely serene. He sees my sins and smiles. He lets them pass. He's handsome, clean-shaven, British Protestant, middle class. <laughs> Wait, there's more. Wait, there's more. Hang on. D don't clap. Throw money. <laughs> you thought I was joking. We haven't come to the offering yet. <laughs> no, listen. This is, this is a poem. This is a poem. It's called respectable, acceptable. I want my Jesus happy, bringing peace and brotherhood, the subject of an all-embracing creed. Sounding like, now I'm sounding South African. <laughs> A reasonable man, approving of the life that I choose to lead. He doesn't carry nail scars in his hands. I'd find that way beyond belief. The title of the poem is Will the real Jesus get lost? It's satire, written by a man called Gordon Bailey. Let's lift our hands about now and say, Father, we need a Jesus revealed in the Bible. We need a Jesus that Evan Roberts saw, that Pastor Jimmy has seen, that Reinhardt seen, that Rodney Howard Brown has seen, uh, that, uh, that, that I need to see because we need a Jesus according to the book of Romans, not in our image, but in your image, oh God. A Jesus of fire, a Jesus of holiness, a Jesus who says, I want my kingdom established on the earth, and I establish it by fire. You thought I forgot Evan Roberts? I haven't. He pestered his pastor, give me a go, give me a go. He said, you're only 17, man. But one Wednesday night, he let him have a go. Everybody say, have a go. Have a go. Say it again, have a go. Have a go. See, that reminds me about another message that I preached when I was in Australia called, you won't know unless you have a go. Everybody say, have a go. Have a go. You've got to have a go. Have a go. Come on, turn to a neighbor, say, have a, go. have a go. Have a go for Jesus. Lay your hands on the sick, preach the gospel, start somewhere. 
Even at four o'clock this morning when the woman walked in, well, she walked in at six o'clock serving breakfast. She's coughing and spluttering. You know, uh, Reinhardt used to say, people who do that normally smoke the devil's macaronis. Uh, <laughs> but I said, come here. And I laid my hands and released the power of God. Say, be healed. She said, that's never happened at breakfast before. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I just want to be a heat-seeking missile on fire for Jesus. Anybody else want to do that? And it's all by grace, and there's no one disqualified. You've just got to lift your hands about now, lift it, everybody, and watching on broadcasts and radios and all around South Africa and say, Father, this is a moment of divine opportunity. Father God, help me to seize it and have a go for Jesus. Finally, the pastor let him have a go. He preached as a trembling 17-year-old on the Lordship of Jesus, on give your heart to Christ and be born again and turn from all sin. Heaven and hell. Who loves convictions? Men of convictions, not men of convenience. He carried on preaching for two years. Two million people got saved in Britain. 20 million got saved in America. At the same time, the Azusa Street revival broke out. A man called James Seymour, blind in one eye, but the glory of God was all over him. They said he'd come to meetings and put a box on his head. Imagine if I showed up today with a box on my head. My God, man, they'd say, that's an improvement. It'd be hard to preach, wouldn't it? I'd be wandering around with a box. But you know what? He, he didn't want any attention on himself. He wanted total focus on the glory of God, on the presence of Jesus. And God trusted him. They say if you went near him, you could feel the presence of God. You see, I'm done with games. Anybody? I'm done with games. I'm done with who's who. I'm done. I'm done. I, I, I just want God's glory. I want to see the manifest power of God open the eyes of the blind, the cripples coming out of wheel, stadiums being packed out again. Listen, we, Jesus is not coming back for a defeated church. He's coming back for a glorious church. He's coming back for a global harvest. He's coming back for multiplied millions. We're not going out a bunch of defeated people. Oh, I'm just a Christian. Oh, I'm hiding in the corner. We're just in our corner. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Let me give you something that I memorized. The watchword for the church. Everybody say, let the river flow. Let the river of revival come. Let that river spill out of the church, the presence of Jesus into the world that an awakening would come. They say that in Wales, bars closed. People stopped drinking. They say, that, they say that even the miners, they were confused. Now the horses and the mules did not know how to work because the miners were speaking with nice voices to the animals. Donkey, move the coal. Donkey, please move the coal. The donkey didn't understand. It was, whales went dry, the bars were emptied, and they went to chapel. Oh, it's got to happen again. Come on, lift up your hands. Let's have a watchword. This is a watchword. Give us a watchword for the hour. A word of faith, a word of power, a battle cry, a flaming breath, a call to conquest or to death, a word to rouse the church from rest, to heed the master's high behest. The call is given, you hosts arise. The watchword is evangelize. <laughs> to fallen men, a dying race, make known the gift of gospel grace, this world that now in darkness lies. O oh, church of Christ, word of faith in Port Elizabeth, arise. You see, revival without awakening will, can I say it, will turn back into spiritual incest. Just give me a wave if you like my preaching so far. How many of you say, Father, turn us out to the lost, to the multitudes, to the hurting, to the destitute, to the needy. 
You know, 95% of Christians have never led another to Christ. You know, I know pastor was saying, there have been 16,000 prayers of decisions out here. Thank God. In my little church in England, we've had three, just kids on the streets praying for people, releasing the miracle power of God. But if every Christian and every leader was engaged in the great commission, not the great suggestion, the job would be done. Matthew 24, 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations. And then the end shall come. I don't know about you, but I want to see the end. You know, there's, there's nothing in this world. I was sharing with the youngsters on, there's nothing in this world that can captivate us, that can keep us. If you've seen Jesus and you've seen his glory, we are here to plunder hell and populate heaven. 1 John 2 verse 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that be in the world. For if you love those things, the love of the Father is not in you. In Spanish, who'd like to hear it in Spanish? It goes like this. No amayas al mundo, ni las cosas que están en el mundo. Si alguna amar el mundo, el amor del Padre no estar en él. Porque todo lo que hay en el mundo, los deseos de la carne y los deseos de los ojos y la vanagloria de la vida, no provienen del Padre, sino del mundo. I become another person when I go into Spanish. I become another, I preach in Spanish. We've got churches in Spanish. My wife is Spanish speaking. You know, I didn't know one word of Spanish when I met her. But when I saw her, I went, ay, 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 ay. Canta, no llores. I said, mamma mia, that's what I've been looking for all of my life. She was the worship leader. I knew no Spanish. The only other Spanish I knew was, la cucaracha, la cucaracha. I said, Father God, how am I going to marry a woman like that? God told me, that's your wife. I said, Lord, what am I going to do? I don't speak Spanish. He said, you better learn. (laughs) How many know I'm a fast learner? But in order to get her attention in the beginning, I just kept smiling at her. (laughs) Every time I saw her smiling. That lady over there, she said, I look like the dog whisperer off the television. The pastor, have you seen the dog whisperer? Not the dog whisperer. I'm Steve Mayo. And I just kept smiling. She, and she thought, she, says, she thought I was a simple guy, which is true. <laughs> but eventually, praise God, I began to grasp the language because I'd seen something that I knew was part of my DNA, part of my destiny, part of my future. You know, I want you to uh, just touch the person beside you right now and say, you are part of my DNA. You're part of my future. You're part of my spiritual DNA. I want you to, I want you to pray this in faith. Say, if there's, if there's grace gift in my life, come on, say it. The rest of my grace gift can never be perfected or come out until I'm connected. Come on, say connected, covenanted, and contributing in the body of Christ so that the fullness of the Godhead in Christ would come out in me to manifest to my generation the power and the glory and the majesty of Almighty God. Can I get an amen? Amen. Eighty percent of Christians never evangelize. Ninety percent say they have no time. How many of you really believe that what I'm sharing today is important? How many of you believe that we got to do something about our spiritual barrenness. There's no more excuses. It has to happen. Listen to this. A hundred percent of even leaders believe that if we did more evangelism, things would happen in the fivefold ministry. Wait for this. 96% of church leaders around the world say that if we began to evangelize, and preach the gospel in the power of God, signs and wonders and miracles and growth would come. 
to the kingdom of God. Can I get an amen? amen. You see, the river is the life-changing, history-making presence of Jesus that wants to flow out of the church, out of you and me, into the world to save the lost. My testimony is, as a young man growing up in New Zealand, I was not seeking God. I was not interested in God. I used to go dancing on Saturday nights. Back in those days, I had crepe shoes and an afro. I was a foot taller. <laughs> and on Saturday night, you would see me walking down Queen Street. Well, you can tell by the way I use my walk. I'm a woman's man. No time to talk. Staying alive, staying alive, ah, 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 staying alive. No time to talk. I was just cruising, man. I was going down Queen Street. I thought I was John Travolta. I'm showing my age now. I'm still the oldest teenager in the world <laughs> at 57. And this is what I heard. I heard a preacher from New Zealand. Anyone from New Zealand here today? There's always a Kiwi somewhere. Am I the only Kiwi in the house? I can't believe it. There must be Aussies in here. That's why you're staying quiet. <laughs> I heard a New Zealand preacher with a Mac on, standing on a, on, on a, a Mac's a coat, not a, not a computer, a, a Mac. Standing on the corner with a Bible. And this is what he was saying. Was there ever a time the Saviour, Jesus Christ, did not love you and die for you and rise from the dead to save you? I was like, stand alive, stand alive. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. What? I was arrested. By the power of God. As he spoke those words, something leapt in. I, I, I was arrested. I stopped. My, my friends were with me. They said, Steve, what's the matter, man? You, come on. We, there's, there's disco, man. There's lights. There's girls. You're interested in those things back there. Come on, don't all behave like you're just such wonderful saints today. <laughs> How many know God gets hold of the biggest sinners? There's only two sinners in the house. The rest, I'm in the wrong place. Come on now. How many of you know you're a big, but you're a big, terrible sinner before Christ got hold of you? Come on. But here's the good thing. Come on, lift your hands. See, He'll turn my mess into a message. My test into a testimony. My setbacks into comebacks. My pain into power. My trials into triumph. Oh, come on, somebody out there. Give the Lord a shout. Jesus is the reason. Jesus is the fever. Jesus is the river. Jesus is the power. And I'll tell you what, I was never the same again after that. Those words, they kept going over in my mind, in my heart, in my spirit. I remember I'd dance all night in clubs, drink all night, and then I'd go home. And every Sunday at seven o'clock, my mother would come into my room. Stephen, get up. It's time to go to church. I'll be staying alive, staying alive. <laughs> and she'd come into my room with a big, a big pint of something called Andrews. You ever heard of Andrews? Epsom salts. <laughs> it works wonders at seven o'clock in the morning when you've been dancing all night in clubs and pubs. I'll tell you what, once I got that down inside me, things began to move. <laughs> and I'd go to church with my mother because I loved my mother, but I never understood it. She always called me the black sheep of the family, and I was because I said, this is a lot of nonsense. How come they all speak with a stained glass accent? I mean, how come God becomes God? <laughs> and how come it, that everybody looks like, if, if, if he's alive, how come they all look like he's dead? I used to go in and say, who died? And there were bells. Who knows about the bells? I'm not trying to hurt anyone, but there were bells. There was a bell. ling 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 ling
Is it just, just bringing back memories? Sit down. Down. And then somebody used to come by with some stuff, you know. And I got a very sensitive hooter. And whenever that happened, I'd start sneezing. Achoo! 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 And my mother would hit me and say, cut it out. You're a disgrace. Cut it out. What are you doing in church? Stop sneezing. And then the best bit was, ding a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling ling Stand up and shake hands with the ding-a-ling beside you. C.T. Studd said these words, Some wish to live within the sound of church and chapel bell, but I want to run a rescue shop inside a yard of hell. William Booth said, Go for souls. Go for the worst. You know, in Auckland, New Zealand, when I got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, it was remarkable Two weeks after that street preacher, I went to a meeting where they all had guitars playing. And at the end of it, somebody said, who wants to give their life to Jesus? My hand went up. I ran to the front. They prayed for me. I was sovereignly saved, baptized in the Holy Ghost, and I thought I was now speaking Latin. (laughs) I went home and told my mom, I said, Mom, I can speak Latin. She said, son, you're having a nervous breakdown. (laughs) But I was telling the pastors, I'd been saved. I'd been saved. I'd been filled with the Holy Ghost. I could never be the same again. At the time, I was a fully qualified French chef running an Italian restaurant chain. That's a true story. And when I went into work the next day, all the staff were nervous because I wasn't swearing anymore. I used to swear at them all. Come on. And they were saying, what's happened to Chef? We don't know. He went to a religious meeting last night, and I don't know, something's come over him. He's all nice. He's all smiley. and doesn't swear anymore. You know what? I was filled with the Holy Ghost. I'd encountered Jesus. The next day, I started preaching to them. Then somebody said, what are you going to do now? I said, I'm going to be an evangelist. They said, what's that? I said, I don't know yet. (laughs) But whatever it is, it must be good. (laughs) Folks, that was 37 years ago. 37 years ago. God is faithful. God is good. And the best is still to come. Come on, tell someone. The best is still to come. You're not too old. It's not too late. You're not disqualified. You're not out of the race. It's time to get up again. It's time to believe again. It's time to breathe again. It's time to go again. It's time to preach again. It's time. Come on. The best time for South Africa is still to come. Let's not talk about past revivals. Let's begin to get focused into what God's about to do, not what He's done. He's going to do it here today because you know what? He is no respecter of persons. He has no blue-eyed boys. I preached that in India. They all had brown eyes. He's here. His spirit is here. Come on, lift your hands. His spirit is here. His anointing is here. His power is here. His glory is here. The Bible is true. Luke 4, 18. I have meditated on these verses. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And ladies and gentlemen, that acceptable time is now, is now. Now faith is not now faith was. 
Give someone a high five beside you. Say, God's speaking to you. It's time to get going. It's time to start believing. It's time to start praying. It's time to get up with those birds at four o'clock and join me. We go running at five o'clock. When God did this to me, I got, it, I, got into my, I got into my bedroom on my knees in Oni Hunger, New Zealand. I cried out to God. I said, God, send me to the nations. I gave up my career. I've been preaching ever since from 19 through to 57. I've never stopped. More than 60 nations and still going. Been in more than 20 in the last 18 months. I'm making my boast in Jesus. There's nothing about me. It's Jesus. You know, I, I, I love Reinhardt. That's why I imitate him. But I want, you to, I want you to know, every one of you lift your hands about now and say, I was born an original. I refuse to die a copy. Say, born an original. Refuse to die a copy. I'm born an original. I refuse to die a copy. You know, what God wants to do through me, he can only do through me. What God wants to do through you, he can only do through you. But it's time that the anointing and the gift and the grace and the power and the fire was stirred up in you and me. Conviction. John 16, 8, the Bible says the Holy Ghost comes to convict of three things. What are they? Sin, righteousness, and judgment. I've preached all over the world, and I'll tell you, if I had to, I'll have time to share more in the second service and in the third service, but I want to release the anointing in a moment. Lift your hands with me. Release the anointing. Release the anointing. Release the power. Release the glory. But I got a friend, John Babu. He's gone on to be with the Lord from the city of Hyderabad. When he was about 57, 60 years of age, he was dying of TB. I'll tell you in the second service how I nearly died at 49 years of age. I nearly died in a hospital bed, but God raised me from the dead. And I remember John Babu sharing this testimony. It's a true testimony. He was in a Hindu temple, worshiping idols, dying of TB. And God spoke to him and said, this time tomorrow, you will be dead. And he, in his inimitable Indian accent, said, Who are you? What is your name? <laughs> and God spoke to him and said, I am living God. You are worshipping dead idols. He said, What is your name? He said, I am Jehovah, living God, Jesus. John Babu gave his heart to Christ. He then went home and led his entire family to Christ. In that place in Hyderabad, in Andhra Pradesh, people are being raised from the dead. Thousands are being saved. The power of God is breaking out because God loves to take nobodies and let them touch Jesus and become somebodies. You see, I believe it's not, it's not, it's not more, more knowledge you need. It's more revelation you need on what God has already said in His Word. People are dying by degrees. See, it's not information that causes transformation. It's, revolution. it's revelation that produces action. Act on it. Act on it. Become a James 1, 22 person. Hear the Word, do the Word. Hear the Word, do the Word. Hear the, if I hear it, I do it. When I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I began to pray in tongues. I found out it wasn't Latin. And every single day I've done it. Can I get an amen? amen? See, in my country, in England, you've got so many people putting such an emphasis on their intellect. And you can miss the things of God when you don't let the glory of God flow out of your spirit. The Bible says out of your belly, not out of your head, will flow the rivers of God. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water, not your head. I never forget when John Babu came to Oxford. And there were some leaders that I worked with. They brought a special case to him. A man who was extremely educated with degrees from Oxford and Cambridge. You know the sort of chap I mean. And they said, oh, John, we've been working with this fellow, this chap, for two years. John said, oh, really? And uh, they, he said, they said, yes, and, and we're, we're trying to make him come to faith. But he's struggling, you see, because he's a genius. He's so clever. He's an intellectual. And we're trying to bring him to faith. John, do you have any words to help him? John Babu looked at him and said, yes, I do. Believe. And the chap said, well, I can't believe I'm struggling. 
He looked at me again. He said, go to hell. <laughs> he said, I, I, don't, I don't want to go to hell. Belief. Well, I, I can't. But... Go to hell. <laughs> but I don't want to go to hell. Belief. But I can't. Go to hell. And then the leaders came in and said, John, you don't understand. He's a, he's, 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 he's a professor. He's an extremely intelligent man. John said, listen to me. You can throw your intellectual wisdom in the bin. You believe. You receive. And God will deliver your brain and your mind from the lies and the deception of the hour of syncretism and humanism and heathenism and evolutionism and so on and so on and so on. Look at the person beside you and say, you've been fearfully and wonderfully made. You ain't no monkey that got lucky. <laughs> Round about now, my brother, could you start to just play by the Spirit? Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I want you to know the power of God is here. I want you to know that Jesus is in the house. I want you to know there's a river that God wants to release right across the earth. I want you to know that God is looking again for anyone who will step forward into the gap and say, Father, Use me for your glory. That's all I have done. I'm still going at 57 and no intentions of stopping. The doctors told me at 49, you've got five days to live and you'll die. But I stood on the word of God and said, I will live and declare the works of God. Since God miraculously healed me, and I'll tell you about that later on, I've not stopped. I don't want to stop. I won't stop. I want you to know I'm also very happily married over a network of churches, and I'm busier than a one-armed paper hanger. But I want you to know that there's no stopping. There's no stopping. The glory of God is ready to break break out. The anointing of God is ready to take over again. I, I, I know that this is a key time for South Africa. I know that pastor has been reaching out into the spirit realm to begin to see a release over the nation like the history books show us of Duplessis and uh, John G. Lake and the history of what has taken place but it's time again and there's some of us that are carriers this is a carrier this man is a carrier uh, there's been others from here that have carried it into the nations now it's my turn to be able to come in here and connect but every one of you have got to carry something Proverbs 13, 17 says, A faithful ambassador carries life, but a wicked messenger falls into trouble. Lift your hands if you want to carry the anointing, the life-changing, history-making presence of Jesus to your day, to your generation. If you want to get serious with God, if you want to cry between the porch and the altar and say, God, this is the moment, this is the time. Around about now is a good time to lift your hands or stand. Hey, Spirit of God, we need a revival. To come and shake our lives, come and flood our lives. With the awakening of your fire, oh Lord, and your spirit, saturate me. Come on, lift your hands, saints. Saturate me where I've become dry, where I've become hard. Make me thirsty, oh Lord. Hey, make me thirsty, oh Lord. Thirsty for more of you, yeah. Thirsty, thirsty, hungry. Oh. Come on, everybody, lift your hands, lift your hands. Holy Ghost, come with waves, with waves, with waves of your glory. Oh. Waves of power. Yes, Lord, waves of hunger for you, oh, waves of your glory, come and flood, come and flood, flood this place. 
I want every one of you to lift your hands and start to sing it, sing in the Holy Ghost with me. Lift your hands, let the Holy Ghost take you. Holy Spirit, come and fall in this place. Come and consume us, Lord, with revival fire, oh Lord. With revival fire, oh Lord. With revival fire, oh Lord. With revival fire, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Fill our lives, fill our lives. Around about now, has anyone got a shout in this place? Come on, anyone got a revival shout? Come on, let me hear you shout. Let me hear you scream. Let me hear you call out to God. Send it, Lord. Send your fire, oh Lord. Send your fire, oh Lord, oh Lord. Send your fire, oh Lord, and consume me. I want you to lift your hands like this. I want you to wave them like banners. Oh, kiara baseti abrabo sheki anda brabasa. You know what? There's eagles in the house. There's eagles that have been sent from the house. Eagles don't flock. They're not. They don't flock. You find them one at a time. But there's an eagle anointing. Come on, wave them like banners because God's about to cause eagles to be raised and eagles to be sent and then eagles to return. This is a house of eagles, and I'll tell you what. It's a house of sons. It's a house of sons. Many sons. Many sons are being raised. Come on, every one of you, lift your. Don't be disqualified. Even if you've never done it before, lift your hand. Say, I need this. I don't understand everything he said, but you don't need to. You can receive far more than I could ever teach or preach. You can catch this thing. I believe somebody in here could be so set on fire, Pastor, that it could begin to shake South Africa from north to south, east to west. It could start again. Ah! Ah! Somebody let out a shout. Come on, someone let out a shout and say, Lord, revive us. Oh, revive us, oh God. Now I want you to put your arm on the person beside you and say, oh God, this isn't about individuals. Although God will choose consecrated individuals, it's about, a, it's about God raising up. It's about last day fathers imparting everything God gave them to last day sons who will become fathers who will impart to the next generation of sons. One generation to the next will declare your works. I mean, this is a time to be passing on the batons, the torches of the fire. Look, my preaching's not the greatest, but that's not what I came here to do. I came to give you what I've got. I've not come to take anything, but what I have in my hands, what I carry in my spirit, I want to give to you. I know when hands were laid on me by Reinhard Bonnke in Africa, I cried out to God. I said, give me a double portion of that spirit. I received it. I've got it. I've gone around the world and laid hands upon people. And the glory of God and the power of God has done things that no man could ever imagine. He's here. The greater one is in me. He's here. And I feel in these moments, firstly, if you're in this meeting and you say, Evangelist Steve, and first of all, I need to get my life right with God. God can't use me unless I get right with God. I need to get right with God. And I'm going to make the first call for those, whoever you are. I want you to run to the front and say, God, get me on fire again. From wherever, if, if that's you, lift your hand. Show, show me your hand. Don't, this is not a time to be conservative. This is a time to allow the Holy Ghost to move. Thank you. There's the the first who's coming next just come 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 from wherever you are lift your hands you can stand you can kneel lift your hands the power of God is going to explode in this place in just a moment in just a moment come on God is in the house can you feel it come on give God a praise in here give God a shout in here give God a glory in here who knows what God is able to do oh Lord oh Lord oh Lord, oh Lord. Oh Lord, oh Lord, we need a revival. Yeah, the 
Keep your hands lifted. Hey. Oh, Jesus. There's a heavy anointing in here. I haven't even talked about the miracles that I've witnessed around the world. A man in a vegetable shop going blind, prayed for God opened his eye. A man in a hospital bed who'd been diagnosed as dead. But when we went and prayed in the spirit, wouldn't look at his face, prayed in the spirit, the color had drawn out of him. But after 15 minutes, the color went back in. Grade seven cancer, given up to die. His mother was a nurse and called me and said, he's dead. How many of you know what the devil says is a lie? When the devil says it's the last chapter of your life, you can stand on the authority of the Word of God, which is supernatural in origin, eternal in duration, inexpressible in value, infinite in scope, regenerative in power, and say, liar! Say, I will live and declare the works of God. That man was raised from the dead. Miracles are happening right now. You can, listen, you don't even wait for me to pray for you. You can feel the power. How many of you can feel the power of God in here? The power of God is in here right now. The power of God's in here right now. This is nothing to do with man now. I want us to begin to focus on the glory of God. The second wave I'm going to pray for is all those that have heard the word of the Lord and you've been, you've been activated. Because that's what an apostolic polemic word will do. It'll activate you. It'll, it'll agitate something. It'll activate something in you to say, Oh God, I need this anointing to get me out of where I'm, where I'm at into where I need to be. Who's, this is what I want you to do. We love you. Can you feel the love in here? Can you feel it? It's amazing. It's a healthy church too because you sweat so much. But we love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. You're loved. You're special. You're special. God loves you. You're special. You're loved, every one of you. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to take you out the back for a little, uh, a little prayer and then come back in. Will you do that? So all of the ones that were the first ones up here, will you follow just Pastor James? And, just and could you give them a big hand as they're going? Just give them a big hand as they're going. And you'll be straight back. Give them a big hand as they're going. The others that are here, just lift your hands. Say, let it fall. Let it fall, oh God. As you lift your hands, I release the power and the glory and the majesty of Christ 